Hey, Wicked Deke here. Welcome to today's video. We're taking another look at the Gabe Velarde injury update for July 17, 2019. That kind of rhymes. Uh, <laughs> so today's video is a bit different than the previous updates. I'm not going to lie to you. We don't have any new information on Gabe Velarde. However, we have a new theory as to what is wrong with Gabe Velarde. Uh, I received a message from uh, a gentleman uh, named uh, Stephen Ferrucholi. Uh, this past weekend, it was a long message. It had many facts. It had links. It had videos. Uh, and it had references to physicians talking about a particular medical condition. And the more I looked at it and the more I looked at other independent uh, resources uh, on uh, the, the condition that Stephen was referencing, the more it started to sound pretty damn credible. So uh, Stephen doesn't have a blog or a YouTube channel, so we talked and he suggested, or I asked and he agreed, uh, you know, that I could go ahead and create this video. Uh, now this video is gonna be a short summary of his theory. Uh, you can actually go to uh, my blog, wickeddeek.com, and you can see his full theory uh, posted on the homepage there, as well as a video to a surgeon. You can also view that video down in the description below. Um, you just click on the link. There'll be a link down in the description. It'll take you to the video here on YouTube where this medical professional talks about the problem and frankly is a lot more credible than I am. Uh, so anyways, this is just a short summary. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. There may be some questions or you may say, yeah, but and this, that, and the other. And, uh, you know, I'm not covering any of that stuff in this video. It's just kind of the short and sweet version of it. So what is the uh, medical issue? It's called spondylolysis. And essentially, it's a stress fracture or fractures uh, in the lower back in particular. And what Stephen found in his research, uh, and which is kind of terrifying to me when I think about all the stupid things that is a teen, uh, is that the uh, bony structures surrounding the spine uh, have not hardened. Uh, it's called ossified, but have not hardened uh, in your teenage years, even in your late teenage years and into your young adult years. So it makes them susceptible to uh, stress fractures due to uh, stress or overbearing loads. So some of the examples that have been given in various videos uh, were uh, gymnasts in particular suffer from it because of all the twisting they do and the landing that they do from jumps. Um, it can put a lot of stress on their backs and because uh, particularly a, a lot of the gymnasts actually get you know very advanced in their skills when they're really young. Uh, you know, the back is particularly susceptible to it. The other example, excuse me, was uh, linemen in high school football. Uh, because when the ball is hiked and offensive linemen and defensive linemen come together, uh, they uh, essentially are hyperextending their lower backs uh, because they both, you know, bend in at the top and, and it cranks their backs backward in a way only a yoga instructor could love. Uh, and if the bones are not hardened, you know, in those areas, they are susceptible to injury. The third example, which you can already guess, hockey players, uh, particularly from repetitive stress uh, associated with shooting, uh, because obviously there's a torquing action there that can impact the back. And in the case of hockey players, particularly larger hockey players, of which Gabe would cla be classified as one, as well over six feet, um, it can be a, a common issue. Uh, and so it's, it's you know, an interesting and compelling idea when you just think about it from that perspective. Now, uh, quite frankly, that really isn't enough, though, to make it much credible, and probably I wouldn't have made a video on it uh, if that was all that Steven sent over, because, I mean, quite frankly, you could have a hydra a, 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 a Herniated disc, boy, hard for me to say. A, herni a herniated disc can have, you know, a lot of the similar symptoms, and and that could be causing problems as well. Or you could have nerve damage, or God knows what. It could be anything, really. Uh, this is all speculative. So, you know, what makes spondylolysis sound like a credible theory? Uh, and a lot of it has to boil down to the treatment. Uh, and so, spondylolysis is not treated through surgery. It's a naturally healing injury. And what uh, physicians will do is they will um, instruct patients to undergo rehab and rest. 
And so a patient will be doing, you know, uh, an hour or two or maybe a bit more of rehab every day, trying to strengthen the core area. So, you know, they're trying to get the muscles to support the back and then they're not playing the sport, whatever the sport is. They're probably not playing any sports, to be honest, but the idea is they're giving the back time to uh, solidify, to heal those, those stress fractures and for the bones to uh, ossify, to harden. Uh, and that's the, the treatment course. Now we know with Velarde, based on the little glimpses of information we've had, that he has suffered from the problem for a while, and we know that the king sent him to rehab. And we heard things from Blake that were kind of bizarre sounding, like, well, he's just going to have to learn to live with it, he needs to strengthen his core, these kinds of things. Well, that's really what you would get from rehab. That, that's a rehab approach to the injury uh, and what have you. Now, we know he did have a procedure at some point in late summer, maybe in September, according to Bob McKenzie. Uh, and although surgery is not a typical course of treatment for this, uh, they do sometimes go in if it is a repetitive injury, meaning that uh, he has had it flare up multiple times. And we, if we go back and we piece together various Kings executives, we know that's pretty much what's happened. Uh, Velarde actually had it previously after the draft uh, at a tournament. He was playing his back was causing him a lot of problems. I think it might've been Fuda that was talking about it. Um, and, but Fuda was talking about it in the sense of, but he played through it. So, you know, we thought he would be fine moving forward. Well, if it's just spondylolysis, you know, if he's getting stress fractures, it's healing, getting another stress fracture, you know, then that's a situation where they might go in surgically and try to stabilize the area. But even then, based on what you get out of the videos from the surgeons, it's not like a major surgery. It's just, you know, they might have put a pin in or something of that sort. Um, and in fact, so what we saw was after this procedure, you know, Velarde came back, he looked good, he went to the AHL, and then it flared up again. Uh, and then something happened that was very bizarre, um, which a lot of people, I was surprised, didn't really give more attention to, or at least didn't think through logically, or at least didn't bitch about it, uh, was the King sent him to Kingston uh, at the uh, end of December uh, of 2018 with instructions that he not play or even skate uh, for the rest of the AOHL season, which was about three months at that point. Um, now the, the junior team that everybody talks about that move is actually kind of, uh, red herring, if you will. Um, Velarde's family is actually in Kingston and he's from there or he was, you know, grew up there later on. So he was actually being sent home and he did an interview with the, uh, Wings of standard wig standard, the newspaper in Kingston, where he talked about, he had been doing four hours of rehab with the Kings and not skating or anything. It was just resting, trying to heal. And he wasn't feeling that great. And now he was going to Kingston and he was literally going to do nothing on skates. He was going to rest and maybe do one or two hours of rehab a day and just basically stay off skates for six months. Well, click the link down in the description of this video and go watch the surgeon and what he says about treatment. The treatment is, don't play. <laughs> you literally go home and rest for months. Uh, he, it, it matches up almost exactly to what the surgeon is saying. So it may well be that, um, you know, Velarde is just following the natural course of treatment for spondylolysis, which is don't skate, get off skates, don't shoot, don't do anything stressful to your back. Loaf. You know, do some professional loafing. Um, you know, so what is the future prognosis? Well, if it is spondylolysis, we finally have some good news. The future prognosis is excellent. Uh, this injury heals itself. It just takes time until the back uh, ossifies, until those bony structures ossify and solidify. And once they do, then that's it. It's done. It's not going to be a problem in the future years. He's not going to have spondylolysis at 25. It's not going to come back. It's not that kind of a thing because the the uh, the bunny structure will have hardened. It'll have plenty of strength to handle the low uh, stress. Now, maybe he has some other back injury, but it won't be spondylolysis. Uh, to give you a comparison, Gretzky had it uh, in his teen years. And so, you know, it's, it's not uncommon amongst hockey players, particularly, you know, offensive players are going to be shooting quite a bit. Uh, so how long before we see Gabe? Well, he's had six months, now going on seven. Um, you would have to think that he's probably had it repetitively in the past. And so at this point, I would imagine that the Kings are no longer in charge of his treatment. I would suggest there's either an independent surgeon retained by Velarde or an independent surgeon that Velarde and the Kings have agreed on, maybe somebody at UCLA or USC who is monitoring his condition. And until that person signs off, Velarde will not be back on the ice. 
And so uh, the fact it didn't show up at development camp doesn't really sound as serious now if it, if it is, in fact, spondylolysis, because, I mean, why would you bring him back early? You know, give him as many months off as possible. Does it mean we'll see Gabe at training camp? Maybe. Um, but maybe not. You know, maybe they just give him all 2019 off. If you go watch videos on YouTube on spondylolysis, people have suffered it. Some of them have have been fine in a couple months. Some of them it's taken six months. Some of them it's taken 12 months. Um, but from everything that I saw, it eventually clears up. It eventually cures itself. That You know, you heal and you're good to go, uh, you know. Uh, so that is very positive. Now, again, that's only if it is spondylolysis. But when you, you put together his symptoms and you put together the strange timeline of, you know, what's happened with Gabe, uh, it certainly makes for a compelling argument. Perhaps it's not spondylolysis. Perhaps, you know, some other thing that nobody's thought about. Um, but this does sort of match up to a lot of what we've heard about Gabe and a lot of what we've seen. Because the move to Kingston in particular at the end of December was very, very strange. <laughs> Why would you do that? Uh, you know, because if Gabe had an injury that was, uh, you know, something that could be treated, either surgically or with rehab or whatever at that point, surely they would have kept him in L.A., uh, sending him to a junior team. And that's not to disparage the junior team's medical group, but I'm pretty sure they're probably not as you know good as what the Kings would have in L.A. Uh, but if you're sending him somewhere just to rest for six months and not play hockey and, you know, well, he can do rehab in Kingston and he's at home with his family and he's probably depressed, you know, from dealing with all this crap. Um, you know, it makes a lot more sense. So anyways, uh, go to Wicked Deke, read Stephen's full message uh, and see what you think. Uh, you can obviously point uh, post comments and questions below, uh, but really take a look at that link uh, down in the description of this video and go see what the surgeon is talking about. Uh, and it sounds pretty compelling. And then do, you know, do your own research, pull up some YouTube videos, go look for articles, things of that sort, uh, because it certainly sounds like a pretty interesting theory. I thought it was interesting enough and particularly credible, uh, potentially credible enough to certainly go ahead and do this. So anyways, thanks for watching. Deke out.